Welcome. In this video, we're going to show you about how do we use uh, smart objects. Um, basically, we're going to start off with the need for smart objects. You see, smart objects are this really cool feature inside of the Adobe products that allow us to um, encapsulate an entire document within another one. And there is a real good purpose for this. And the simplest way to show it and to, I guess, examine what a smart object really is, is to show you it here in Photoshop. Now, what I have here is two uh, layers here, the sun rasterized and sun smart object. Now, other than the fact that this one's eye is turned on, there's really nothing different other than you see this little icon here. Okay, we'll get to that in a moment. The first thing I want to discuss is the need for the smart object. So sun rasterized here, this layer, has uh, a sun. And this um, image is, I mean, it's a pretty good looking gradient. It's, you know, just some simple shapes and uh, different types of fills. It was created in Illustrator originally, but it, here it is in Photoshop. And it's a standard layer, meaning that it is a rastered layer. Now, here's the reason why we need it. If we were to say composite two parts together in an image and you decide later on that you don't like how you positioned it you're going to run into some problems let me show you for example maybe i want this sun to be smaller so i'll do a control t for transform and I'll hold down shift and alt and i'll make it uh smaller here in the middle and i'm going to shrink it down really tiny i'm going to be like yeah that's what i want i want it to be tiny maybe i'll put it over here but then you know what later on you decide, hey, I want to uh, make that big again. Okay, so here's the idea of multiple resizing events. So I'm going to Control T, hold down Shift and Alt, and bring it up big again. And you're like, wow, that doesn't look very good. Well, I haven't pressed Enter. It'll get a little better, but you got to see this looks really, really poor when I go ahead and complete it. So you can see that it has lost some of its original clarity. That's because in shrinking it, I have destroyed pixels. It's a destructive edit. Now, when you have a smart object, and I want you to see how I have this uh, file here, this layer here is an actual smart object, and you see that it, it's, it doesn't look blurry along the edge. You know, its edges is, is, is very clear still. And that's because this is a vector object that's been embedded. It's an Illustrator document that's been embedded in a layer inside Photoshop. Now, when something is a smart object and you do the same thing, I'm going to control T on that layer. I'm going to hold down shift and alt and shrink it down. And we'll shrink it down just as much. We'll hit enter. And you'll see, hey, there he is, a really tiny. Yep. And then we go back and we decide later on we want to make it big again. We do Control T, hold down Shift and Alt, and enlarge it back. And we hit Enter. And you see that it is, once again, still looking perfect. Well, that's because a smart object is like having an entire other document in a layer. And however the quality of the original contents was, whatever the, those qualities were, are going to be always, um, always stored for any situation. So you can enlarge it, you can add shading to it. Now, certain things you can't do, but um, the truth is, is that there's a lot of things you can do. Now, this right here is a smart object that uh, came from Illustrator. So it's vector. So it's going to look perfect no matter how, what size I make it. And no matter what I do to it, as long as it's still a smart object, as long as I still see that icon, I'm going to be able to do whatever I need to. Now, let me tell you, um, making something into a smart object doesn't exactly make it high quality. It just preserves whatever quality you have at that point. So let's take a look at this and see how we can change this in the next video.